OT, and then step one, OET minus step two, H3O positive. So there's, this is one point I want to make clear because I mentioned it in Alvalds and I want to mention it again. We only have one reactant with a base. And whenever we only give you one reactant, you always assume this is in excess. Meaning, well, the first step is no new, nothing new. Base comes in, pulls off your only alpha proton available to form your enolate, and you get O minus carbon carbon double bond and your OET. But this isn't where the reaction stops because there's a ton of this floating around and you have a fairly reactive enolate. So that enolate will now react with another molecule of its starting reactant. <clears throat> so, the enolate will swing down, and the double bond will attack the carbonyl of another one that isn't in its enolate form. And that would result in the double bond reforming on the first one. Let's number these. One, two, three, four. Double bond of the oxygen reforms on one. The electrons from the one, two double bond go out to connect two to three. And three is a double bond O gets swung up into an O minus. And three had the OET attached and carbon four. Finally, that O minus will swing down and kick your OET out. And so you end up with this as your final product. A 1-ester, OET, and one carbonyl, one keto. That would be your final product. Now there's something else we can do that furthers this reaction. The plasin is done, but the product we can still work with. And this should be a callback to exam two. You can see an arrow with three steps in this order. Step one, OH minus. Step two, H plus. Step three, heat. And whenever you see these three together, you should be thinking about decarboxylation. Let's look at the first two steps first. OH minus and H plus. What OH minus will do is this oxygen, this negative charge, will attack the carbonyl and swing that up. And again, it could deprotonate the spot, it's pretty acidic. But it won't, change, it won't have any net result because there's only OH minuses floating around. In this case, this is the preferred position to attack. And whenever you see these three arrows, you should be thinking, if I have an ester, this is what's going to happen. <clears throat> and so now you have an O minus. You have the OH that attached. You have the OET that was there. And then you have the rest of the chain. <clears throat> now that O minus can swing back down, and it has an option. It can kick out the OH or the OET. It can do either or, but because we assume there's a lot of OH minus, a lot more OH minus than say we have of the esters, eventually that OET gets kicked out, and you're left with a carboxylic acid. Now keep in mind, Again, we have a lot of that OH minus floating around, which means it's going to look to do things. Now, we have a bunch of acidic protons in the structure. We have the ones here, but one that's even better than this would probably be the oxygen on the carboxyl or the hydrogen on the carboxylic acid. And that OH minus can very quickly come in and grab that proton, making your O minus. Regardless of which proton it deprotonates, either this one or this one, that's the purpose of the H plus. All the H plus does is whatever anion you make we're making sure it's not there at the end. So whether I pulled off from the middle alpha or from the OH, the OH group, all the H plus is going to do is make sure that that negative charge isn't there for long. And so the net result is still the carboxylic acid. So those first two steps, their purpose is to make that carboxylic acid. And then heat. Whenever you see the word heat, there are two possibilities. The condensation that we talked about for the, the aldol reaction, or decarboxylation. We saw that the aldol condensation occurs when you have a setup of carbonyl on one 
OH on uh, car alpha carbon on two, and OH on carbon three. Decarboxylation occurs when you have a carbonyl on one, an alpha carbon on two, and a carboxylic acid on three. One, two, three. <clears throat> and that's what we have here. We have a newly formed carboxylic acid that is three, two, and the carbonyl on one. So the long story short of what happens is whenever you see this in the presence of heat, you're going to draw a dotted line through the bond between two and three, the bond between the carboxylic acid and its alpha carbon that is between that is uh, shared with the other carbonyl. And you're basically just going to erase carbon three and its bond to two, meaning what heat will do is chop off that carbon that carboxylic acid leaving you with nothing but that. The carboxylic acid will leave as CO2. Okay? Now, one thing to always point out, and this is where they use it in synthesis, is the fact that, look at the ketone we made for a second. We made a ketone that is symmetric. Everything is the same on the left as it is on the right. And it turns out, whenever you do a Claisen condensation followed by, well, it, let me rephrase that. Whenever you do a Claisen condensation where the two esters are the same, and then you follow that reaction with a decarboxylation event, you always form a symmetric ketone. And so they can use this in a synthesis problem. 